Hello, I'm Cameron Sheets with Queerty, and I'm so thrilled to be joined today by Bridget Everett, Jeff Hiller, and Murray Hill to talk about season two of their absolutely wonderful, life-changing, delightful series, Somebody Somewhere. How's everyone doing? That's the best intro we've had. <laughs> yeah, thank wow. you. Wow. Later, good night. Yeah, well, we're all done here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start off with a hard-hitting journalism question, the one I've been dying to ask. How did the Chloe and Halle song on Godly Hour end up in this season? Because that song is so good. And I was so thrilled to hear it. Don't let this like take away our, our downtown sort of credit. But um, Murray and I were out in the Hamptons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Staying at our friend's house. I just and, drove. <laughs> and uh, and that, that sort of became like our, our song. Like we were sort of, we kept putting that on the car. And um, anyway, it was really cool to think of like a way to get it involved in the show because I think it's it's such a sick production. I love that song. It's it's really cool. We had a party at the Ding Dong Dorm, and uh, you know, uh, marijuana was legal at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so Saturday night we took a we took like the, I think they're called brunch. Uh, it was either brunch or pride edibles, and like yeah. um, <laughs> let me tell you. That was really nice. We were all kind of high. Well, I, I'll speak for myself. I was high. I don't know about my sure. my, my friends. And I was dancing, but I wasn't in the room. That's how high I was. <laughs> <laughs> we put the song on and this like sort of holler at me dance just came up. We're holler at me. <laughs> that was <laughs> all Bridget, but she infused, she, her spirit shot out of her like, like a superhero ray. And all of us were like, we know this dance now too. It was beautiful. <laughs> I should clarify, you know, if someone was watching this and they didn't know the Ding Dong Dorm, which, you know, get with the times, but yeah, that is where, yeah. that is the house you rented and all stayed in while you filmed this season, correct? Yeah. How did that name come about? Uh, our oh. director, Rob Cohen, <laughs> called it the Ding Dong Dorm, and I was like, well, it's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, we felt, we felt seen. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And that's important, that's of be course. The, show is the Ding Dong Dorm. <laughs> well, I was going to say reality series making of at it's the like Ding Dong Dorm. Yeah, right. Yourself. Yourself with the camera. I think the three of us in season one and two single handedly stimulated the takeout food economy <laughs> in Lamont. Illinois. It's like all of a sudden there's business every night. So not only does the show have a lot of important messages, which you may or may not ask us about, but uh, we also contributed to the economy of Illinois. That is beautiful, of course. (laughs) Let's get into it a little bit. You know, I think coming from a queer perspective, I see the show as so kind of quietly radical. I think, you know, there's this big theme of the fact that we can we can find happiness, we can find community wherever we are. And I think like, you know, it doesn't need to be said, but this is a pretty dark time for the LGBTQ plus community. And I wondered what sort of message you hope this season specifically puts out in the world. I, I'm going to say right now, I love what you said because you, you get it. <laughs> Quietly radical. And I think especially what's going on literally like this week mm-hmm. in our in our country, you know, compared to what we film when we film in the summer to now to what's going to happen three weeks from now is this show. First of all, it's bucking the trend that there's actually less queer programming that's coming out now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's regressing. So media and TV and movies are regressing their representation. Not coincidentally, the same time our country is going bananas about it. So this show was quietly radical in the first season. And it continues to be so in the in the second season. And I think with Fred's character, you know, he was a little showman, you know, a little bit in the first season. But but this season now, he we get a little bit more of an internal life. Mm-hmm. So I think what's radical and what people need to see now, 3D, three-dimensional people. We got hearts. We got problems. We laugh. We cry. We're just like everybody else. And it, and I think it, it dispels the notion of fear because all mm-hmm. of this legislation, not only it's a political ruse, but it's also based in absolute fear. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tell you something, Karen. I can tell you this, Bridget. How can you not like us? <laughs> it's impossible. What did I do in the bath, in the bedroom? <laughs> I don't blame you. It's nuts. <laughs> the stuff, the, the things that this guy can bend over and pick up off the floor, crazy. But when you see us on the show, 
Mm-hmm. You love us. We got the same heart as Bridget. We're all beating the same heart mm-hmm. and we're all breathing the same air. And I think that's mm-hmm. where radically subversive. You know, like every time there's like a, a show that has prominent gay characters, I don't know about you, but like all of my all of my queer friends are always like, that's not the right guy yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> and um, first of all, it's nice to play someone who is three dimensional, who mm-hmm. has uh, uh, thoughts uh, other than just, you know, uh, let's go have sex. You know, uh, it's it's nice. To, I mean, um, that's good, too. But that's just one of many. Uh, but for me, I think it's also just nice to see somebody like on the other side of 40, actually, like, mm-hmm be seen as a, as a human being and, and especially like a, 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 a femi, profoundly homosexual, awkward looking, middle-aged homosexual. What is happening? Why am I talking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were, he, were, he was saying that and Bridget and I were like, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we're all like, yep, oh, sure. uh-huh. <laughs> well, Jeff, while, while we're, we're talking about you, I actually wondered, Bridget Murray, I don't know if you saw, but your sweet co-star was absolutely terrifying in American Horror Story. I really wasn't and um, then I got too upset. I was like, I, not not my job. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I was going to ask. Yeah, <laughs> you did. Yeah. Very, I, I very scared. scared. I really got too scared. Even though like, I know half the people in the show. I was like, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no don't do that. <laughs> well, it just shows what a good you know actor he is because as much mm. as I like to tease Jeff, um, he's actually not a cannibalistic <laughs> serial killer. Oh. So I thought he did a great job. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but he still was pretty gay as a killer. Wouldn't you say? Sure. <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> you can't take the fish out of water. You know what I mean? <laughs> That is my time, but truly, I mean, this show just means the world to me. I I love it. Thank you so much for your time and for just sharing this with everyone. Thanks for watching it and supporting it and, uh, you know, being a smart young kid. We appreciate that. I, I try. I try. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more from us at Queerty, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.